those things. So I teach a um, um, I teach R Ed and PN. So on Mondays I teach a PN section, Wednesdays I teach a RN section, and then Friday I teach three PN sections. Okay, I'm the course lead for the PN program. Um, so if you have issues, we'll talk about this in a minute, um, but always start with me. Hopefully I can help resolve things with you if there are issues. If I can't, we have to go to the course lead, which is me. So if I can't solve it with me and me, then we go to Dean Brown, okay? Um, but I, I'm a pretty good problem solver, okay? I think you'll you'll find me to be really, I over-communicate, I talk a lot, but whatever. There's no issue with over-communicating. I think you'll find me to be enthusiastic. Um, I like. I think you'll you'll recognize that I really enjoy what I'm doing. Um, I love the students that I have. It's like we're all one big great family, and we all have to get over the finish line together, right? Because you got to pass this class to keep going. This is not a class you need to fail. Okay, it's not a hard class, and that's always my first question: is what horror stories have you heard about this class? Can't imagine. I haven't, it actually hasn't been bad this week. I've heard it's really hard. The exams are really hard. Hesse's really hard. So what have you heard? What, do you, what have you heard about this class? Let's get that out of the way right now. Everything you just said. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's not a hard class. class. What? I say yes, the same thing, but a class okay. is very, very hard. All right. So I would appreciate if you would just keep an open slate, open mind. Okay. It's not a hard class. It's a different class. It's not acute care setting, right? So the biggest thing you have to do is mind shift. You have to shift your mind from the acute care setting into the community. Because who do you think cares for the people in your community that need healthcare? The community nurse, right? So I need you to leave your clinicals, leave your work environment all behind when you come into this class for 90 minutes and think about caring for people in the community. Okay, because a lot of people that leave the acute care settings need health, follow up health care, and they seek that out in the community. So that's the biggest challenge is shifting your mindset. Okay, we are out in the community. Pretend you're out in your zip code that you live in now. What do we see? We see home health nurses. We see public health nurses, school nurses, occupational health nurses. They're the ones who take care of work, work environments. We have hospice nurses. We have correctional nurses. We have faith-based nurses, right? Think about all the settings in the community that need care, rehabilitation centers, prisons, correctional facilities, schools, hospice, home care. All this gets done in the community. So community is also, people think of community nursing as public health nursing. Okay, so it's a really big umbrella. It has a lot, lot in it. So this course is gonna provide you an introduction to it. Community nursing is a lot of teaching, a lot of education. There's a lot of direct care. Right, but it's not acute care. Okay, acute care, you have your patient load. In the community, you I'm just giving you an introduction now. We still have to go through the PowerPoint and all that stuff. But your your patient, your client could be an individual, could be a family, could be a subset of the population, say homeless. It could be a large group of the population, maybe elderly. You work with the elderly population. You're like me. I was working with the kids for the last 20 years. So community nursing, you're caring for everybody, anybody, any possibility across the lifespan, all the way from newborns up to the elderly and everything in between. Which brings me to the next question, which I kind of just gave you the answer to, but why do you think this class is situated at the end of your program? Most of you are in your seventh term, if not eighth term. You're almost done. All right. Why is community at the end? Why do you think?
to make Help sure bring you know, everything all together. Oh, Go ahead. No, you're fine. Go ahead. Who said bring everything together? You get a star. Oh, Replacing a virtual star in your forehead. Oh, thank you. You're welcome, Mariah. That's what it is. We're bringing everything together because you need all your skills in the community. You need your med surge skills. You need your pediatric skills. You need your geriatric skills. You need your fundamentals. You need your OB. That's why it's at the end. We're bringing it all together. Because you could be caring for using any part of what you've learned. Right? So all that knowledge that you've learned so far is going to be applied into the community setting. And that's, that's the basic premise of community nursing. People need care in the community. The homeless need care. Teen pregnancy, they need care. The, the common, it's very common in the community to care for people with chronic complex illnesses, common childhood ailments. It's all I dealt with in the schools. Common childhood ailments, asthma, allergies, all that. All right, so you're going to be caring for communities, a wide variety. You don't know, I mean, unless you're a home health nurse and you have a specific population, you could be doing something, you're doing something different at every visit, right? So you can't blow off this class, okay? You got to take it seriously. I get your other classes have clinicals and labs and sims. We don't. OK, so I always tell students at the beginning, just carve out a section of time during the week to get your community work done. It's not that much. And we'll go through it. It's not that much. And then move on to your other classes. All right, but you fall behind in this class like you do poorly on exam one. There's no reason to. You're playing catch up the whole term. We don't have our second exam till week seven, right? So that's a long time to be stressed out about a community grade into week seven. And there's no need. This is not a hard class. You just got to keep up. Okay, there's not a whole lot of work. Um, there's really not a whole lot of readings and stuff. I mean, if you compare it to the RN, Community, you know, they've got four, five, six chapters a week, full chapters. We have a couple of full chapters and a lot of chapters that have snippets of pages. Right. So I, I'm just telling you that right off the bat. Most people heed that warning. But there's some that don't. And it's just a long term. And it doesn't have to be. Okay, so I'm trying to encourage you. And I've got really good news. Our HETSI scores for PN community keep going up and up. Last term, January, as of a couple of weeks ago, our average HETSI score was 83. That's awesome. It's awesome. You know, when I took over as course lead a year ago, we were in the mid-70s. So we're slowly creeping up. And I, I take a lot of pride in that. I work hard preparing this class. And each term it's getting better and the scores are better. So yeah, I couldn't be more proud of my January students. Overall, they did fantastic. So that's good. That's good for you to know on the front end that what we're teaching is preparing you for your exams and for your HESI. 83 is a really good average. So hopefully that's encouraging to you. Okay. Um, so tonight, what I want to do, I know you've gone through the PowerPoint three, where's Angela? Probably four times now. Because um, we have to go over in week one. I'll go through it quickly because I know this is the last class of the week. So I already know you've gone through the PowerPoint with your other classes, but I have to go through it. 
And then we'll go through the syllabus quickly, uh, point out a couple of things. And I want to jump to the module modules and show you a couple of, of assignments I want to highlight for you. Okay, but you'll notice that we're real, I'm not real, not me, but in general, we're really not working ahead anymore. Okay, there's a couple of your big assignments that I've already opened up as of Monday, and they'll stay open. But the other assignments, your NCLEX, your discussion questions, your case studies, there are no C CJ Sims in this class. Okay, it's case studies. Um, but they're, they're all available on the Sunday that before the week opens. And that's just, that's it. That's the way it's gonna be. Um, and it's not me, it's across the board. Um, so I wanted to mention that right off the bat, but there are three assignments that are already open and we'll talk about those, okay? What burning questions do you have before we get started? I promise you we will be done at 9.30, I promise you. What questions do we have? Nothing? When is the first exam? Everything's in your modules, it's week four. Our exams are week four, week seven, and week 10. Let me give you another tidbit. Once we get to week eight, things get really busy. Weeks nine, 10, and 11. And if you've read through the syllabus and the modules, you probably have figured that out. So if you can get working on these two projects, your HESI prep and your vulnerable populations assignments that are due in weeks nine and 10, if you can get jump, if you can jump on those early, it's going to benefit you. And we'll talk about those two assignments later. Once we get to week nine, there's like four things due in week nine. There's an NCLEX, there's a case study, there are your HESI prep is due. And it's a review week for exam three. Nine's a hugely busy week. And then once you get to 10, you've got an exam, you've got your vulnerable populations assignment due. And then what's after week 10? You jump right into the HESI. Okay. So once you get through week eight, it's three, you know, grinding, three grinding weeks. And, and that doesn't even include your other classes. Okay, so I guess what I'm saying is stay on top of things. You'll be okay if you stay on top of things. Um, but this, this, gets, uh, this class gets busy towards the end. Okay? Yes, sir. When will we start our, um, our group project? Your group project's not due till week seven. That's one of the assignments that are open. And we'll go through that when we get to the module. I'll send out the groups in the next week if you want to get going on it. Uh, no problem. Um, it's an infectious disease group project where I send out an announcement with groups and I assign you a disease. And that group does a little research project on that disease. Pretty easy. Somebody takes the lead and sends out an email to the group. Hey, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What part do you want to do? And then send it all back to whoever the lead person is, put it together or whoever does that into a word. It's a paper and you all have to submit it, but you can work on that ahead of time if you want. That's due in week seven. So um, I'll send out the groups. I don't think I'll get to it this weekend. I, I get to get organized after week one. Probably next week I'll, I'll send out groups. I try and keep them. We have a lot of campuses. We have Centerville, Cincinnati, Columbus, Cutler Bay, Cuyahoga, Cuyahoga Falls, and Norfolk. So I do my best to try and do groups in the same campuses so that if you're on campus together, you can work on the project. But I, I don't know how... Looks like I have quite a bit of Norfolk students. I could probably do that with Norfolk, Columbus. I have several. I'll do my best. I will do my best. If you're just kind of a, looks like I only have one Cincinnati student, Lene, you're going to get grouped in with another campus. But I'm from Cincinnati too, Michelle. Yes, you are. 
So you know that you and Lene will be together. Um, but it's usually, I usually try and do at least four people so that it doesn't become an overwhelming project. So the nice thing about that is you get to meet people from other campuses. Gla I'm a glass half full. So anyway. Um, so exams in four, four, seven, ten. And then you get quizzes. You got five quizzes. Okay. And remember, everybody knows at this point, don't anybody ask me, why do you give the quizzes at the beginning of class? You guys know that that's the protocol. Why do we, why do, we do quizzes at the beginning of class? To get it done and over with. Hmm, okay. I didn't look at it that way, but that's a, that's right. It's a quiz, like a pop quiz, like pop quizzes are given at the beginning. Yeah, to see how well you prepare for class, right? Did you do the readings? Did you do the prep work? And there isn't that much, right? And the quizzes are right at the beginning of class. If you did your prep work, you'll do fine. And then I spend a lot, actually a lot of time on the quizzes, doing a lot of teaching from the quizzes. We review the quizzes. Why is this the right answer? Why is this the wrong answer? And do a lot of lecture from the quizzes. I like the quizzes actually. Um, so there's five of those. Um, so just to... So next week is your first, next Friday night is your first quiz. It'll be on weeks one and two. So you just have to do your readings for weeks one and two. Every week, I'm kind of doing this backwards, but every week you're going to get an announcement. I literally copy and paste stuff from the syllabus. All right, and we'll go through the syllabus. Um, I copy and paste your readings, to-do list, and then you're going to have two attachments every week. One is going to be... Uh, it's one's going to be a PowerPoint, which is a summary of all the concepts we're going to be covering so that, you know, you can match it up to your readings. And then the second attachment is your notes page. So you can take notes. As when I do the lecture, you can take notes on that notes page. So you get that every week. And then you already have your uh, term review schedule right for exams one two three in hesse i try and send that out early so that you can plan accordingly to try and attend i really would encourage at least one live attendance at one of the reviews it is factual that scores go up 15 20 percent 15 20 points if you attend these live reviews so i try and send it out early because i know everybody's busy with school Clinicals, work, family, I get all that. I completely a thousand percent acknowledge how busy you guys are. But I want to try and get that to you ahead of time in case you can plan. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Um, so just in case we can make the reviews, do we get the videos posted on our pages? Yep. You'll get all the recordings. So there's okay. three of us. There okay. is uh, eight sections, seven sections. I have four of them. Professor Kershaw has two and Professor Ford has one. Is that eight? Seven. Seven. So the three of us each do a live recording and you will get all three recordings. Okay. I'm not worried about, uh, Professor Kershaw does hers on Sunday nights. Um, I have a Monday class, so I like to get her recording out right away to my Monday, at least my Monday class. Um, but I always post hers on Sunday night. I wait for it, actually, and post it. Um, but then you'll have all week to review them. So you'll have three weeks to, uh, you'll have several days to review all three recordings. Okay. And as far as tutoring, I'll just mention this now. I love meeting with students. I love it. I've probably had 20 meetings this week with students upon getting going. I have no problem meeting with students and tutoring students. Okay. However, my only caveat is I need you to do your due diligence. So if you, if you would like to meet prior to an exam, I need to make sure that you have done your work, right? You have 
either attended live reviews, you have watched the recordings, you have built your study guide, which you got, I believe, I've already sent your study guide out as well. Have I sent your study guide out? I thought I did. It's the concepts, week one concepts. That's your study guide. So as you go through each lecture, that's what you're filling in. That's going to be your study guide. And then you bring that to the reviews if you come or you add to that from the reviews. Anyway, back to tutoring for exams, right? I don't use that tutoring to go through classes that you missed. Like if you missed a class, I need you to review the recording first. And then if you have questions or don't understand things, then we can work on that. Same goes with exams. You have to get, you have to prepare, get your study guide, watch your recordings, and then we'll meet on what you're still struggling with. Okay, don't use tutoring sessions to review a missed class. Does that make sense? And, it, you know, if, you, if you're, it's pretty obvious to tell who's engaged and who's not, who's paying attention, who's not. And if it was a class that you had a bunch of distractions and you didn't hear a lot of the material, I'm not going to schedule a tutoring session to review the class with you, right, that you weren't engaged in. I'm going to want you to watch the video go through what we, or listen to what we went through and then whatever you still don't understand, then we'll go through, right? So you gotta do your part too, okay? What else? No CJ Sims, we have a couple of case studies. Um, I think there are weeks four and nine. Um, discussion questions, we only have two. And we get them right. We get them out of the way right off the bat, weeks one and two. And you already know, um, you've submitted. You have two Wednesday due dates the whole term, and it's this past Wednesday and next Wednesday. That's it. Everything else is due on Sunday. So that's pretty easy. All right. So if you're one of the students that didn't submit an initial, uh, I actually had several from this class that didn't submit your initial post Wednesday night. You can't use the excuse that, oh, I didn't know. We didn't have class till Friday. You didn't tell us this. No, you got to get in and look at the shell on Monday, right? And see what's due. So you all received a message from me, whoever didn't turn it in. But the top half of the rubric uh, for discussion questions is initial posts. The second half is peer reviews. So you all got a message from me who didn't turn in and said, you're not going to get credit for the initial post, but please still do your peer reviews so you can get at least partial credit for the assignment. All right. So with so many students, I really do keep uh, keep on you guys. You know, if you get emails from me, like I sent out a bunch of emails from my class earlier that said, hey, you were 30 minutes late for class. Um, please let me know when you watch the recording for the first 30 minutes. Right. I mean, I. I it's not that I want to keep bugging you, but I, I will stay on top of you because I want everybody to pass the class. Okay, I'm not bugging you and I'm not crying or being nosy or that kind of stuff. I just want to keep you guys on track. All right, because this is not a class to fail. There's no reason for it if you keep up. If you come to class, pay attention, take notes, at least come to a review or watch the recordings, prepare. You know, I hear over and over again, especially with exam one. Oh, I know we had a PEDS exam on the same day of the day before, and I really was focused on PEDS. Okay. Now we had a med surge exam the night before. Yep. So I was focused. Okay. But you got to find a way to squeeze your community studying into. It's just, it's just not a hard class. I think it's a fun class. I think it gives you guys a break to look at things differently. Gets you out of the acute care setting into a different mindset, right? That's my take. Okay, that's my ranting and raving. Um, let's go through the, let's, let's go through the PowerPoint you've already seen three times, but we still need to go through it. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. If you guys could all just stay on camera, uh, just stay on camera, please. The other issue is cars. I've had several issues with cars this week. It's nine o'clock on a Friday night. Hopefully, well, I would, probably wouldn't be able to see you if you're in your car because it's dark out. 
but uh, you can't be in your cars. We all know that, right? You can't be driving. You can't be a passenger. You can't be parked. All right. Um, I don't anticipate that being an issue with this class, but I have had several issues this week with cars. And it's amazing to me after seven terms, eight terms, people are still in cars. But, um, okay, let's, let's get to the PowerPoint. I'm going to share my screen so I can only see a couple of you. And so I'm just, I'm just respectfully requesting that you stay on camera. Okay. So we all know what online nursing is, right? The only thing I'll say about this slide is if you have issues with your computer or your internet, it's unstable. Please, please make arrangements to either, I don't even, are your campuses open at this time of night? So what do you do? What do you guys do? So um, Chicago Falls is open. It is open, okay. It's open because they still got classes that don't end until like 10, oh. 30, 11. Okay. All right. Well, I would say at least for exams, right? And quizzes, well, quizzes during class, but for exams, if you, if it's not stable, you should probably plan on going to, if your campuses are open this late, you got to go to campus or find a place that has stable internet for exams, right? You don't want to get into an exam and start it and not have not have internet, right? And the other thing too is, um, we'll get to this, but exams, if you wanna take your exams on campus, which I don't know if it's gonna be available to you guys, but if like Cuyahoga Falls that is open, if you guys wanna take your exams on campus, that's fine. I always have students during the term taking exams on campus, but you have to find a proctor, right? You gotta find your own proctor. You gotta give me at least 72 hours notice and the name of the proctor so I can get in touch with the proctor because your de campus dean has to approve that. Does that make sense? So I don't care if you take it on campus, but you got to, there's some due diligence on your part that you got to do. All right. And that's, that's in this PowerPoint. By the way, you have this PowerPoint in your announcements. I sent this to you. So if you want to review anything, uh, re this, the one slide I do want you to review is this one or keep handy, slide four. All right, this is your kind of your communication chain of command. So you start with me or any issues, All right? And then you go back to me for any more issues since I'm your course lead. And if I can't figure it out on the first time or the second time, we'll go to Dean Brown. And here's Dean Brown's contact information. Okay, and your third box down, keep that handy, okay? Etiquette, we don't need to go through all these bullets. You've already seen them this week. I don't typically have issues with etiquette in my class. If something's going on, I'll either put you in a breakout room and we'll, we'll talk about it briefly, come back to class. I will not call you out. There's no way I would call anybody out in the middle of class or do anything like that. If I have to send an email to you after class that we need to get together, we can do that, but I don't. I don't have issues with etiquette. You know, with big classes, everybody comes off mute and talks, but if people are talking at the same time, everybody's usually respectful and stops and lets the other one go or whatever. Okay? So that's not an issue for me. If it is, you'll know. Um, attendance. Um there's no more, you know, hey, can I go to a different section this week? Everybody's expected to be here tonight. You're on the roster. This is your class time. Okay. Um, mandatory sessions, just like your on-ground classes. Right? I mean, treat this as a like you were going into your classroom, right? I know online learning's new for a lot of people, but you guys have been doing this now for almost two years. Right? You know what's going on. Um, we talked about discussion boards. Uh, you have one more Wednesday night next week, and that's it. Um, and don't forget your two peer responses by Sunday. Right? I've filled out uh, in great detail, actually, all the assignments, when they're available, when they're due, 
And then there's the third date in there is available until. I always do a week out after it's due in case anybody is turning in anything late. You have up to seven days, right? We all know that. So the available until will be a week after the due date. Okay. Um, standards of professional conduct. Okay. Academic integrity. That's a big deal. Really big deal. And you know, it's being focused on because it's being talked about in every class. Right. And I'm just going to jump to this. Uh, oh, that's on the next slide. But anything with regards to any kind of academic integrity issue, dishonesty, um, it's going to you're going to get disciplined and they're watching. I'm telling you the last two or three terms that's being watched really, really closely. Um, cheating, plagiarism, unauthorized use of notes. You guys are a Friday class and there's a, I have students from your campuses earlier in the week. You can't be getting stuff from them, right? You can't be getting quizzes and answers and you just can't. Don't do, I'm just telling you, don't do it. Okay. Like I said, this isn't hard. Okay, you we can figure it out on Friday evenings. Don't be going to your classmates that have a Monday class. Hey, what was the quiz? What were the questions? Um, exams look different. We get to build our own exams. And so I have a different exam for every every class. So don't bar don't they'll be different. Okay. Um, forging or altering assignments. And there's your unpermitted collaboration. All right, don't do, just don't do it. Don't do it. Um, allowing others to copy your work, um, providing answers from graded assignments. So that's kind of like the quizzes. Code of ethics, nursing code of ethics. You should all be familiar with our nursing code of ethics, right? It cover, it, it, the expectations are both individually and as a profession. Okay, what are your code of ethics? Your values, obligations, duties, professional ideals, right? And they and they affect us individually and as a group. These are non-negotiable. These are ethical standards. And we'll cover a whole section in this class, like you will in your other classes about ethics. Really important, okay? Um, do not be on any cheating websites. Mm -mm. I'm telling you right now, do not. Uh, Studo Studocu, Course Hero, Stuvia. Uh, I was on Studocu last term. Hey guys, Tom. Um, sorry guys, sorry. Um, I was on Studocu last term. My old study guides are on there. My old exam reviews are on there. I had to redo everything. Okay, my documents are on there. So I know these sites are being monitored um, by your deans, your campus, and by our online dean. Okay, I know they are. And it was at last, I think it was at the beginning of last term, there were somewhere in the vicinity of 400 students on these sites. Do not be on these sites, even if you're perusing them. I mean, Obviously, if you're downloading things from them or posting things, it's all ID based. You can be track; it can be tracked back to you. Okay, I don't know who posted all of this stuff in the last couple of years, but really, a lot of my stuff was on there. So anyway, um, but you know, and I'm sure your other instructors have told you this week in your classes that this is all being monitored really closely. Michelle's shaking her head. You guys are aware of that. So just stay off these sites, okay? Um, I know that um, if your if your name's associated with these sites, you're just gonna you're gonna go into a into a group that's called the kind of the higher monitoring group, right? Or higher, you're being looked at more closely, and any it's gonna be grounds for either failing the class or dismissal from the nursing program. So just be mindful of that. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say about that. You all know about the late work policy, right? I can work with you. 
That's this is one of the areas I could be flexible in. Can't be flexible after the after seven days, but I can be flexible on the front end. So if you let me know you're going to be late with something and we talk about it, I'll work with you and we can figure it out. Maybe it won't be a 10% deduction. I don't know. We'll have to see case by case. Okay. But if you're proactive and let me know about things, I'll, I'm happy to work with you. I can't do anything after the fact. You know, I had a couple of students last term that were within 1% and they hadn't turned in a week three or week six NCLEX, which would have brought them over the top. They couldn't turn in a week three and week 11. You only have eight, seven days to turn it in. Okay. But I'm happy to work with you. But I told you at the beginning, communication for me is, that's it. That's the ultimate. You know, if you can't, if you can't proactively communicate or communicate what's going on, I can't help you. Okay. Um, I don't need to be in your business. I don't want to know your business, but if there's something that's preventing you from being successful in this class, you've got to reach out. Okay. And I could talk with Dean Brown. Uh, we can try and work on a plan together, but proactive. All right. And if you if you take an exam and you think you did poorly, and you contact me after and say, "Oh, well, you know, I was in the ER last night. My kid was in the ER last night. You know, what? I can't do anything for you after the fact. You got to do it. You got to let me know ahead of time. I can work with you. All right." Um, attendance, mandatory, right? You know about the whole attendance thing. We get reports. We can see when you signed in, when you signed out, if you left in the middle of class, if you left early, whatever, it all comes up. And it's not my report. It's generated from the system. And that's the report that I have to send to the registrar after every class. And that's how they keep track of your attendance. Okay, so so if you come in at 9.01, you're going to get docked 15 minutes. It's in 15-minute increments. So if you're chronically late by a couple of minutes, figure it out. Got to change that. Get here on time, all right, because it's going to add up quickly. Then you start getting to the percentages where you're going to run the risk of losing a letter grade, right? You guys have all heard this before. It's in 15-minute increments. So any at 9.05, you come in at 9.05, 15 minutes. If you come in at 9.20, it's going to be 30 minutes. All right, so please, it's. I know you guys, I know it's been a long week. I know it's a late class, but if you can get in here on time, I'll get you out of here on time, I promise. All right, so please, please try and be on time. Okay, and then the other thing too about being on time is on the quiz weeks. I start quizzes right off the bat, like within a couple of minutes. Like we'll be, we'll be, do, we'll be doing our quizzes at 9.03, 9.04, 9.05. .05. I start them right off the bat. I want to get these done so that we're done. I think I have a student in this class with accommodations that gets some extra time. So we'll be, we'll be reviewing quizzes by 9.25. And I'd like to spend a, a lot of time on the quizzes because there's a lot of er learning opportunities within those quizzes and those questions. So if you're late, you know, if you're chronically late and you come in at 9.05, you're not going to be taking the quiz. And you don't, and you can't make it up. And that's something I'm not really, I can't be flexible with because I get that report. And if I send a report to the registrar that shows you on a quiz day, you were three minutes late, I have to dock you for that time. They have to match. The report's... Reports have to match. I can't fudge any of that. You're late, you're late. Okay. Um, just went through all that. And don't get to 20%. Once you get to 20%, which is missing quite a bit of class, then you're going to lose a whole letter grade at the end of the course. All right. So attendance is really being uh, taken real seriously now. So here's your here's your percentages. You get to 5%, you're gonna get an email through Campus View. Get to 10%, we're gonna have to meet. You get to 15%, we gotta pull in your dean. Um, pull in Dean Brown, pull in your campus dean. You gotta get everybody together and figure out why you're late. All right, and then you get to 20 and 
No, that's where it gets, you know, 5% isn't, you know, you're late for class a few times. You're going to get to 5% real quickly. It's little increments. Okay. Um, key uh, success. Review your work each week that's due. Complete it. Complete your reading assignments prior to coming to class. Uh, attend your live sessions, your mandatory classes. Um, read your rubrics before you do any assignments. That's how I grade. And there's rubrics in there. You have a whole section in your student section about rubrics. They're all in there. Um, we don't have CJ Sims. I know this says CJ Sims. We have papers. We have a case study, a couple of case studies, NCLEX. Two discussion questions. Okay. Log into class at least four to four to five times a week. I know number two says announcements weekly. I would suggest more, a couple of times at least. That's how I communicate with you guys through announcements. And I post a lot. I told you I'm kind of an over communicator, which is whatever. Um, but I post a lot of announcements. All right. So. <clears throat> Um, most of you should get an alert when I post something, right? Yeah, you guys should get an alert. So just go in and jump in and read it, you know, within 24 hours. Nothing is urgent that needs to be done right away. But I do post a lot of announcements for you. All right, keep in contact with me. Again, it's that communication piece. I can't stress that enough. That's all we do in nursing. We collaborate and we communicate. Right, so just... Continue to practice that. Have reliable internet uh, and computer. Um, maintain a schedule. I mean, this is a busy term. You guys are pulling due dates from everywhere right now, right? <laughs> I mean, you're pulling, you're pulling at some point, if you already haven't, you're gonna have to sit down this weekend and just do a master calendar. However, wherever you do it, on your phone, on a piece of paper, but you have a lot of due dates, a lot of things to remember this term. Get or If there was ever a term for organization and time management, it's this term. Not to say your other terms haven't been hard. This is always a very challenging term. So get yourself organized early. Okay? We've already done all of this. Um, I did have two students, though, that hadn't, as of this evening... Hadn't take I checked before class started, hadn't even taken the syllabus or technology quiz yet, which means they haven't been in the shell yet. But you got to take those before you can get in the shell. So I have two students, you, you know who you are, but get in there and take those quizzes so you can get into the shell this weekend and look and see what's going on. Makes me a little nervous that I know you're this is the first class, but it makes me a little nervous that a few of you haven't even been into the shell yet. Um, but hopefully you'll get to that this weekend. Um, textbooks, you should have your three textbooks. Okay. There is not a community book for PN. We're pulling from three other books and I'll show you that in the uh, syllabus, which you've probably already seen. We're pulling from your med surge book. We're pulling from your introduction to peds and maternity and your fundamentals. So we're pulling from all those three books. So everybody should already have those from other classes in your library. So make sure this weekend, those are ready to go. All right, you have them in your library. If you don't, you're gonna have to get with your campus and make sure that gets uploaded into your library. Three books. I would suggest, you. I don't know that you have to print the syllabus out, but I would certainly save it to your desktop so you can kind of follow along weekly what's going on, but you'll also get a reminder from me in your weekly announcement of what's on the syllabus, okay? So that doesn't mean you can ignore your syllabus, just you know, make sure you're looking. I mean, this is good student learning outcomes, course objectives, syllabus is, has good information. I just don't go over it all. Uh, that's up to you to go through. So um, come to class prepared, right? attend it says additional review sessions we don't do additional review sessions during the week what we do do is exam review sessions meet with me to discuss difficult concepts during office hours i sent you a syllabus cover sheet 
I always put the hour before class as an office hour, as an official office hour. If you would like to meet during that time, please send me an email and I'll get on early. I only mention this because that's not the only time I'm available. I'm available like most of all the students I've met with this week. I'm available whenever. Okay. I make myself available to you guys all the time. Okay. I'm available in the mornings. I'm available in the evenings. I'm available on the weekends. You just got to reach out. So that hour is the official hour that we put on our, that I put on my syllabus cover sheets, but it's just a snippet. Okay. If you want to use that hour, fine. But, you know, a lot of people work, a lot of people have families and a lot of people, I have to work around your schedules and I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay. Um, scheduled tutoring sessions. We already talked about that. Uh you and your student resources, you have all the IT support that you need, right? You know how to get in touch with them. You know how to do an IT ticket. Um, let's see, tutoring, we talked about that. Here it, now, this is my best version of copy and pasting and trying to import something, okay? I can't, look at how blurry it is, all right? There's a better copy in the syllabus, but this is what our, this is what your workload is. Three exams, PESI, five quizzes, four sets of NCLEX questions, vulnerable populations project. I can't even read this. HESI prep assignment, uh, two case studies, and then you've got two discussion questions in your group project. Okay? No CJ Sims. Weeks one through five, the homework grade will be turned off. But six and seven, I'll turn it on. And that's because week eight is a drop week. And I would like for you to see, and really, we're not going to have that much, even in weeks five and six. We're going to have one exam. This is homework, right? Or we're going to have one NCLEX. Well, six, you'll get your second NCLEX. But you still have two NCLEXs. We'll have one case study. What else are we going to have? That's it. So we're not going to have that much. So if you're turning in your homework and you're doing a decent job on your NCLEXs, then your grades are going to go up. If not, then your grade is going to go down. And that's why we turn the homework grades on so you can see how it's affecting your overall grade. Right? Remember, we don't have that many KGAs. We only have, we have three exams, five quizzes in the HESI. Then I'll keep that on for week six and seven. <clears throat> and it gets turned off a week, week eight for the rest of the term. Okay. And I try, I really try and keep on you guys about homework because the last thing in this class you want to do is be a homework fail. I have some every term and it absolutely makes me nuts for a homework fail. There's no need for it. There's not that much work in that this class. Okay. So I try and keep on top of you. So you know that you know the you know the drill. You have to have that 78 at the end of the term for KGA for all your homework to add, jump in or to add in. Right? Okay. <clears throat> exams and quizzes. Exams, you need to really have the two devices, right? Your laptop and your camera for Zoom. Quizzes, most everybody's sitting in front of their computer. Okay, I, I'm, as long as I can see everybody and they stay on camera, I'm okay with that. Okay, but it, you have to be on camera. It's considered a KGA, and so you have to be on camera and be proctored, right, for your quizzes. Um, What else do I want to tell you about quizzes? One attempt, 15 minutes. You got to be on camera. Talked about that. Quizzes are not going to, this term, this is a new slide. Okay, this term, quizzes, cannot be made up for any reason. Zero. And that's this is something I can't be flexible with. All right, so if you miss class, you miss the quiz. If you're late for class, you miss the quiz. Okay. We have five quizzes. I think the quizzes are worth 5%, so each one is worth 1%. There are some students who need that at the end of the term. 
<clears throat> ExamSoft is nothing different. This is all about ExamSoft. There's nothing different. I believe the ExamSoft practice test is going to be up on Monday or Tuesday of next week. And that's the one where you go in and check all your compatibility, right? With your devices, all that. I, I it, all your accounts are probably okay from last term, from two weeks ago. However, it's always good to go in and check that practice exam soft. Checking that compatibility is probably worth your five minutes just to make sure everything's up and running. So you don't want to get to week four, exam one, and you can't download or you're having technical difficulty. That's the purpose of that exam soft practice test. All right, so I'll shoot an email to you announcement when it's up and running and just please take five minutes and go in and do it. Okay. I just need to do a spot check. Is everybody awake? Barely? How are we all doing? Melina, I can't see you. You need to come on camera. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I was grabbing a pencil or a pen. No worries. No worries. All right. All right, guys. Uh, let's see. Hey. Oh. Um, exams. Everything's the same. There is nothing different for exams. Nothing. Nothing. Um, anyone with accommodations? I've already sent out a couple of emails. If anybody has accommodations, you got to let me know. Um, hang on. One sec. One sec. Hang on. I'm just gonna mute myself for. Mm, I don't want this one either, for real. Melina, you ain't on mute. Melina, you're not muted. Oh, thank you. Okay, sorry about that. All right, um, I was trying to get that dinging, the other phone that was dinging. Did you hear that? Um, okay. Um, oh, accommodations. If anybody hasn't reached out to me that is repeating, is a re-entry or has accommodations, you gotta let me know. Sooner rather than later. Accommodations don't carry over from term to term automatically. We got to, I've got to provide the paperwork to Dean Brown and she'll approve that. I mean, typically you're not going to need new paperwork, but I need the paperwork. Um, the other thing too, on this slide that everybody seems surprised about is no paper. Okay. For exams, if you please get yourself a whiteboard, a small whiteboard, go to the dollar store and get a small whiteboard, no paper. Okay. Go get a whiteboard, please. You're going to need that for your HESIs anyway. Um, ex missed exams, you don't show up for an exam, it's an automatic zero, especially if I haven't heard from you. If there's an emergency and we need to reschedule your exam within the same week, we can do that, but I need we're going to need documentation. Okay. If you miss an exam for personal reasons and don't have any documentation and you let me know you're going to be missing it, we can reschedule it for within a week, but you're gonna to have to take a 10% deduction. Okay? So again, it's that communication, that proactive communication. Of course, if there's an emergency before the exam and you can't get in touch with me and you don't show up, eventually you're gonna get in touch with, the, touch with me the next day and let me know what's going on. We'll figure it out. Okay? Um, and again, communication. I can, I can help. I can work with you before. I can't work with you after. Okay. If 
I already gave you the example. If you did think you did crappy on an exam and can't come back to me and say, oh, I worked the last three nights in a row and uh, whatever, got to let me know on the front end. Okay. Um, to go through that. Hesse, this Hesse, let me tell you something about this Hesse. If I, I know I told you what the average score was, but this Hesse, community Hesse is very med surge focused. Okay, it's med surge, adult, pediatrics, geriatrics. Okay, very med surge focused. Okay, there's your remediation. We'll go through as it get, that gets closer. Nothing's changed with that. You know how we know how to get in for exam security. Contact me if you have any problems or if you would just like some additional help. Homework assignments. Get them done. Get them turned in on time. You plan, organize. What is it? Plan, prioritize, complete work, submit work. There's an, a sample of your schedule. However, however you organize, this is just an example. Late policy we went through, NCLEX. Okay, here's my thing on NCLEX. In the weeks NCLEX is due, it gives you in the module the categories you need to select. You need one batch of 50. Okay, I don't want, I can't take 225s or 510s. It doesn't give you the overall picture of all the categories. Okay, I need one batch of 50. Here's my thing with NCLEX. There's a reason we have you doing four, 200 questions. It's good practice. It's good practice for your boards. All right. So don't send me an NCLEX that has like a 30. All right. I'm going to send it back to you. All right. I, will, I really want something between 45 and 50. All right. But remember, each of them are worth 1.25%. So if you send in a 30, it's going to score you as a 30. And though that percentage will bring you down. Um, NCLEX is they're really good practice, practice assignments. All right. So if you go in and do your NCLEX early in the week and you score 30, go back and you can take it as many times as you want. You can only submit it once. Okay, so if you score 30, go back and redo it. Read all your rationales. Read up kind of like your remediation in your HESI. Go back and read what you got wrong and why. Then go back and retake it, get a 40, and go back and do those remediations or rationales and redo it and submit me the highest score. If you're doing it on Sunday night, an hour before it's due, I won't be able to send it back to you. But if you do it early in the week and you're sending me in a low score, I'm gonna probably send you an email that says I've reset it for you if you wanna try and do it for a higher score. Okay, but NCLEX is, NCLEX is really good. I had a student tell me last term that part of her, always in week 12, I asked the students what they did to prepare for the final. One student told me last term, because I told you guys that it's med surge heavy, peds heavy, geriatrics heavy. Um, you can go in, hopefully you know this, you can go into NCLEX to, Elsa, uh, to Evolve and go into study mode instead of exam mode right? And you can create your own sets, right? So she went in and was creating adult med surge, neurosystem, uh, hepatic system, whatever. She went in every week and did an extra 50 questions with regards to adult, adult health. I thought that was a great idea. I don't know if you guys can do it, but if you can, um, yeah, she went in, put it in study mode and created her own sets. And she ended up with an 1100 on the HESI, right? She said she did over a thousand extra questions. She said there were, there she didn't do them all, but there were over a thousand questions she could have done, right? So if you do have extra, extra motivation, you know, do some, do, do geriatrics, do pediatrics, do med surge, do adult, do pediatrics, do extra questions. Okay. All right. We're getting close to the end of this. Uh, we already went through that. I can't take screenshots. So if you go in and do your NCLEX um, assignment from www.elsevere.com, 
it's not, it's only going to give you a screenshot. You got to go in from the link in your module. All your assignments should be done through the links in your module. All right. I can't accept a screenshot and you actually can't, once you've done the screenshot or once you've already gone in and done it and got a screenshot using the wrong entryway in, you're not going to be able to redo the assignment. You're going to end up with a zero on the assignment. 50 questions. Talked about that. Don't need to talk about HESI right now. No CJ Sims. You have case studies. Papers. Well, I want to go through those assignments. Rubrics. You have a whole section of all your rubrics. There's a rubric for every assignment that's due. That's the way I grade. So you gotta, you gotta follow those. I already sent you a in your announcements, I sent you a cheat sheet on APA. These, this last slide, I don't, uh, these are the questions I like to cover in week 12. Um, let me, where's my syllabus? Okay, anybody have any questions on the, power, the PowerPoint? Okay. Here's the course description, which you can read on your own course description, student SLO, student learning outcomes, your course objectives. You need to read all that on your own. Here's your references, and I want to point these out. Here's your books. Here's your three books. Make sure you have the right edition for your fundamentals, med surge, and intro to maternity and peds. Okay? Don't worry about this last one. That's your CJ Sim with Nurse Think. Okay, I'm going to show you, these are the three, in week 12, every term when I go through, what, what did you use most in your resources? Here's what, here's what students have used with regards to community, is this HESI comprehensive review for NCLEX PN examination. All right, so make a note of that. If you struggle with math, get into that calculating with confidence book. Okay, really good resource, Math 101. And I've also sent you some additional math resources. Okay, so if you struggle with math, um, you have the resources to, to start sorting that out. And then the third one was this one. This is a very popular resource, the Saunders, Comprehensive Review for your NCLEX, for your exam. Has anybody used these before? Have you used them for other classes? Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, here's that grading component, grading component and values. Here's all what this class is made up. Your three exams, your HESI, your quizzes, four NCLEXs. So each would be worth 1.25. Your vulnerable populations worth 5%. Uh, completion of HESI prep, which we're going to go over in a minute. Two case studies. So each is worth 2.5%, your two discussion questions in your group project. Okay, we already went through your KGAs, your HESI, your assignments, your, we already went through late work. And then if you haven't had a chance to look at the course outline, these are all the topics we're gonna be touching upon. Okay, so your intro to community nursing, your levels, which is your primary, secondary, tertiary, uh, one of your assignments this week is to get onto Healthy People 2030 website and look at that. If you look at this, probably set up standard and the uh, standard way of setting it up. The left side is your concepts that we're going to cover. The middle section is all the readings and preparation you need to do. And the right side is what's due. All right, so this is where I copy and paste and do my weekly announcements from. All right, next week we'll do school nursing, growth and development, common childhood ailments. And we'll start to talk about family nursing, family health risks. And then starting in week three, we spend a couple of weeks talking about vulnerable populations. Okay, we talk about rural populations, migrant, farm workers, homelessness, individuals, families living in poverty. And then we get into even more specific vulnerable populations. You're Pregnant adolescents, uh, we do a uh, unit on LGBTQ, mental illness, alcohol, tobacco, and 
other drug problems, which is your substance abuse, um, addiction issues. Um, and then we'll start with hospice, palliative care. We'll talk about death and dying, faith and spirituality, how it impacts patient care or health care in the community, ethics. We'll touch upon ethics weekly, actually. Um, and in week six, we talk about different roles of the community nurse, occupational health nursing, environmental health nursing. Part of community and public health nursing is a lot of teaching. So we'll do a whole unit on learning, barriers to learning, reinforcing health education, program development. How do you evaluate all of that? And then we'll talk about infectious disease prevention and control in the community. Really important for public health. Um, HIV, TB, STDs. We'll do a unit on bioterrorism and disaster. And then the last couple of weeks, we'll talk about different kinds of community care, home care, case management, community resources, care of the complex chronic illness, um, clients. And then we'll finish up with human abuse and violence, which is human trafficking, domestic violence, assault, um, child abuse, elder abuse, um, and then cultural influences in nursing. So it's a pretty broad overview. By the end, you should have a pretty good understanding of, of the umbrella of public health nursing. Okay. And then lastly, all the announcements are posted. Hopefully you guys have had a chance to read through them. Um, there's your APA format. There's online etiquette. Welcome. Your syllabus cover sheet. The reason why I post the syllabus cover sheet is it has important dates. It has your start date, the end date, and the drop date. And the drop date is usually the Friday of week eight, but all those dates are on there. There's your, here's the PowerPoint that we reviewed earlier. Here's a whole bunch of really good math resources. Take advantage of those, okay? And then you might wanna save to your desktop this, the live schedule of all the exam reviews. There's your week one announcement and information that you really need to read through every week because uh, it has those attachments that the weekly PowerPoint with all the concepts we're going to cover, as well as the other attachment, which is the PowerPoint with notes that you can take out to the right side of it. Tonight was the deadline to change your schedule. So that's passed. Um, so I hope everybody that I had sent out an earlier message Anybody that wanted to change the schedule to a different section, tonight was the deadline. Um, and that's all I've said so far. So a couple of things I want you to be aware of that are in your modules, okay? We started to talk in week seven about the group project. Let's see. And you got to go to the week it's due to find out about the assignment and find the rubric. Okay. So, like I said, I'll pick an infectious disease for each group and you got to go do your research on it. Okay. Here's the specific rubric. So somebody will do introduction and history of the disease, whatever it is. And look at the rest of this. Look at all, make sure you look at all this description because that's, that's how I have to grade it. Okay, somebody can do who's affected by it. How is it transmitted, right? Asking specifically, age group, gender, cultural group, who's most at risk? Somebody else can do symptoms and pathology. What are the symptoms associated with it? Right, how's the body affected by the disease? Another person can do cures and treatment for the disease. Is there a cure? If not, what are treatments? Okay, and then what research has CDC done for the particular disease that you're assigned? And then the last part is how is a person's daily life affected by whatever disease you're covering? So it's a research paper, but it's done by a group. So everybody has to work in tandem, right? Somebody's gonna have to take the lead and reach out and 
hey, you know, we're in group alpha, we're covering tuberculosis, who wants to do what? And then everybody, somebody puts everybody's parts together, you put it into a proper APA paper, and you all submit the same final copy. So I get it, I'm gonna see several copies of papers, I get that. But everybody has to submit it so it gives that ding in your grade book that you submitted it. Okay, so I'll get those groups out to you within the week. Okay, therefore you can, if you wanna start working on it, you start working on it. The other assignment I wanna to mention to you is your vulnerable populations assignment. It's due in week 10. It's kind of a longer version of what you just did for your week one discussion. Much longer version, actually. But this is a, um, it's worth 5%. And this is during that busy time. That Remember those, that week 9, 10, 9, 10 and 11. So you, it, within your zip code, you've got to pick a, some kind of a vulnerable population. Here's, a, here's some examples. Poor homeless people. Poor or home and or homeless people, pregnant adolescents, migrant workers, severely mentally ill, substance abusers, maybe a domestic violence, abused individuals and victims of violence, human trafficking, somebody with a communicable disease, uh, maybe somebody who's eight, uh, people with HIV, people with Hep B. Elderly is considered a vulnerable population in itself. Children are considered a vulnerable population in their cells. High-risk pregnancies. This is just a start list. If you want to do something outside of that, that's fine. Um, somebody last term did veterans, um, which is a really interesting uh, project. This is, as you read through it, you'll figure out this is a PowerPoint. This is an individual assignment. You only have one group assignment. That was week seven, your infectious disease paper. All right, this is uh, this is picking in your zip code a vulnerable population. Okay, so don't don't give me you're going to get a whole bunch of points knocked off if you give me like the national statistics for homelessness or the national statistics for teen pregnancy. Okay, I need something local. It's supposed to be your research. You pick something in your community and you go research it. Whether you get on the public uh, health department website, whether you call a crisis center, whatever, however you get the information, but this is meant to be a, a local, a local vulnerable population within your community. Okay, and here in week nine, or what are we in week ten? I think we're in week ten. It gives you the assignment details, what needs to be included in your PowerPoint. Um, population description, health risks, resources, what are the service gaps, meaning what resources are not available for that population. And of course, a reference page. So that's an individual assignment. So that's an assignment that's open now. It was open on Monday. All right. So if you want to get going on that, feel free. Um, Okay, so that's one big project due at the end of the term. It's worth 5%. The other one that I just want to spend a few minutes on, because I know we only have about 10 minutes and I promised I'd be done on time. It's in week nine. It's called your HESI prep assignment. And this is actually a graded assignment. Okay, this is... Where is it? Okay. You're going to download this. I would download this. If you're on your computer now, just download it now. Put it in your desktop or print it out. This is this is something. This is going to be your HESI study guide. You're going to create your HESI study guide. Okay, this is a this is a uh, project that you should be working on all term. So by the time you get to week nine, it's complete. And all you have to do is submit it. If you wait until week nine to start this, it's going to be a nightmare because you're not going to remember the weeks we covered the concepts. Um, so here's this, it's a blank document on the left. It has topics. Okay. How did I find these topics? Okay. Where do they come from? It came from the HESIs. So I can look at the HESI. I can look at the finals of what students have taken in the past semesters. 
I have no idea what the questions are because I don't do the HESIs. That's done from the national bank, like your boards. Okay. I can, I create the exams that you take during the term, but HESIs, I don't create the questions, but I do know the topics that they're asking about. Okay. These are the topics they're asking about. Okay. So each of these boxes represents a different, different topic they're asking about. I haven't updated it based on HESI's from two weeks ago. If there are additional topics that come up, um, I, I'm not going to hold you to, this is the assignment that's in your shell. So I have to grade you on this. But if there's additional topics that come up, I'll provide those to you guys. If you want to do those topics, fine. And I would suggest that you do it. But I can only grade you on what's here in this assignment. Okay. I have a question. Please. Yep. Go ahead, Angela. Should it should it be handwritten or should we type it in? Uh, it, uh, you know what? Most students save it. It's a Word document. Okay. Most students stay, save it to their desktop and just fill it okay. in as you go. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. You're welcome. So you'll see that these. Um, I don't cover every one of these topics in class, but I do cover the concept that the topic is within. So for example, I wanna jump down to home health. There's home health. Health promotion and teaching. Okay, we're gonna cover that as a concept, but there may be topics that are that you're, you're learning in med surge, you're learning in peds, you learn in geriatrics that I'm not gonna cover in this class. That's why I always say this is a very med surge geriatric, pediatric focused HESI. All right. So I'm not going to cover lipid screening. You're going to get that covered in your med surge class. Okay. I'm not going to cover elder health assessment. You're going to get that in geriatrics. Does that make sense? I'll cover vision screening preschool. Seatbelt safety, that's all part of teaching in the community. But look when we get to home health. This home health section is full of med surge topics. I'm not going to cover this in class. Okay, I'm not going to cover NG2 feedings in home care. You're going to get that in med surge, right? Geriatrics, home nutrition. You're going to get that in geriatrics. Does that make sense? So I'm covering the concepts, but you'll see like COPD. ADLs at home. I'm not covering that COPD, right? It's part of complex chronic illnesses, but we'll just do a quick overview of it. But like a below the knee amputation, home care assessment. All right. So, so my point is you're going to have to use your class notes, lecture to fill in part of this, but you're going to have to go back to your books your med surge books, your maternity book, your peds book, your fundamentals book to get some of this information as well. Does that make sense? So I can give you a jump start by providing you the topics that HESI is at, your final is asking about. And that's why I say, make this a work in progress document. Don't wait till week nine to do it. I got a I, question. You're going to get one second, Michelle, you're going to get out of this assignment what you put into it. If you're doing this at the last minute in week nine, you're not going to get a lot out of it. But if you are doing it, you know, not every week, but maybe every couple of weeks, you stop and fill in the sections that you can. It's going to help you in the long run, I promise. Go ahead, Michelle. So as far as with the nursing guidelines and what you okay. want us to fill out, are those going to be like signs and symptoms? First of all, what it is, signs and symptoms, the treatment for it. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know what you're looking for in the nursing okay. gallery. So let's look in the directions. Okay. As you complete the assignment, please use your nursing process, your ADPI. Okay. Each topic that you're addressing requires critical thinking skills of how to apply the nursing process from assessment to evaluation. What that means is we're all moving. We're moving towards next gen, right? What's next gen? Clinical judgment, right? So these exams in HESI are not about memorizing and definitions 
It's about taking all the knowledge that you have from all your classes and being able to care for a patient. Okay, so let's do anthrax, for example. Let's say you are potentially working with something, somebody that has an anthrax, anthrax exposure. There's a question about anthrax on your HESI. What do we want to know about taking care of that client? Well, Michelle, I'm thinking we might want to know what might they present with? What treatments are available? How is it transmitted? How do we protect ourselves as healthcare workers? Put yourself in the clinical situation that you're caring for somebody that's a potential anthrax exposure. Does that help? I don't want you to memorize what's anthrax. Okay, you should already know that. It's gonna be, how do you take care of a client that's potentially exposed to anthrax? Right, think about your CJ Sims. They're, they're all scenario-based, right? You're going to have to look at the HESI like you do your CJ Sims. It's clinical judgment. It's, it's knowledge turned into clinical judgment. So your knowledge, take care. One of the things they found in the last 10 years with nurses is they were book smart coming out of school, but then you put them in the clinical setting. This is probably over the last 15 years, actually. You put them in the clinical setting on orientation, there are a lot of errors because they weren't ready for the clinical piece. They were so focused on book memorization and definition memorization. They could tell you what hypertension is, but when they got into the situation of caring for a client with hypertension, they didn't know what to do. So that's why this big shift in the last year, year and a half, 18 months, has been towards next gen, is taking that clinical knowledge and being able to apply it coming out of school, not learning how to apply it once you get into the work setting, applying it during nursing school. And that's why you have this shift in the way these questions are being asked well, your HESI, you've got drop downs in your HESI, right? You got a scenario with drop downs in your HESI. That's what your CJ Sims are, right? You're looking at labs, you're looking at x rays, you're looking at vital signs, right? You're seeing the client as a whole. Well, that's what these HESIs are. So let's do disaster planning. I don't know a question they're going to ask. They are asking a question about disaster planning. So let's put yourself in the scenario of you're in the, this is how I think about it. You're in the community working as a public health nurse. You're part of that disaster planning team. What kinds of things are we going to be looking at? What has to be done? You don't memorize what is disaster planning. It's what do we actually have to do, right? Who has to come together? Who has to be on that team that's disaster planning for your community? Right, a red red tag triage. I'm not going to ask you what the definite. What's the difference between red or yellow or green? They're probably going to want to know or give you a scenario of a client. Right, is this client not worth saving? How do we tag them? Right, so it's clinical based. Does that help, Michelle? Yes, that helped me. Okay, good. So that's the way I want you to look at this. SARS, again, what are they gonna present with? How com communicable are they? What's the treatment? How do you evaluate if the treatment's working? All right. So again, I, I cannot stress enough to get go to save this, this. If you save one document, two documents from this first week, save your syllabus, on your desktop and save this assignment. Okay, so don't just don't wait till week nine to do it. Don't. And then the rest of your modules are. Well, let me close that. The rest is all your NCLEXs. Your oh, I know what I want to mention. 
in the middle section of the syllabus where it has all your readings, if it says Canvas Reading, have you guys figured out what Canvas Reading is? It's embedded in your module. That's part of your weekly reading. It's not every week. Well, there are some weeks you don't have any book reading and you have Canvas Reading and vice versa. But this is your Canvas Reading. It's actually nice. It's embedded right into your module. And four different Canvas readings that cover the four different concepts. There's a little bit of book reading. Now in your readings, in the modules, you'll notice, let's just do week one. If you have a full, since we're using three books, all right, if you have a full chapter, you're going to have the PowerPoint right here, a link to the PowerPoint. But if we're only doing a page or two, like in week two, when we do all those, let me just show you. Week two, where we do all those common childhood ailments, right? You've got all these just snippets. Look at all these snippets of pages in your peds book, maternity peds book. So you're not going to have the all these PowerPoints below here. You're not. Because it's not a full chapter. You're not responsible for the whole chapter but you are responsible for certain pages. But if you are like here in your fundamentals book next week, the full 11, the full 12, you will have those PowerPoints down here. But if it's just pages, you're not gonna get those full PowerPoints, which is good. Does that make sense? But Canvas reading is embedded, right? You know, I suggest every week that when you start, it, when you're reviewing what's coming up next week, what's due next week, just start from the beginning in week one and just, just click through and see what's there. Here's your overview. Here's the concepts we're going to cover every week. The next page is your reading page. Gives you what your readings are. If there's any PowerPoints or websites, they're down here. And then if you continue to click through, you're going to see your Canvas reading that you have for week one. There's four pages. Introduction to community nursing. Levels of health prevention. Healthy people 2030. And then your last one is introduction to vulnerability. They're all built right in. All right. So I promised I'd get you out on time and I'm already three minutes late. I'm super tired and I'm sure you guys are super tired. So I apologize for my three minutes going over. Has this been helpful? Do you have a better overview of what's gonna what's going on? Yes, somewhat. <laughs> it's a lot, but it is a lot. lot. It is a lot. Done. Well, it's probably a yeah. lot too, because it's late Friday night, but yeah, it, it's not a whole, whole lot. It really isn't. But anyway, <laughs> you're going to take all this information. And I told my group earlier today, if you could just maybe carve out some time to chill, even if it's a couple hours tomorrow, just chill and then regroup and start and put, start putting all this together. Not just this, but you got a lot to put together. It's been a long week. And I, I know that it's been a long week for everybody. Okay. Um, yeah. If you have any questions and want to stay on after, I need Regina to stay on after. I need Charlotte to stay on after for just a second. Um, it was really nice to meet everybody. Um, I think yeah, I, th I think you'll enjoy the class. I do. I do. Um, Thank you, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, you know how to reach me. Reach out to me for anything between now and next next Friday. Check your announcements and we'll be good. We'll be good. We'll all get across the finish line together. Yes, we have to. We have all to. Right, thank you. <laughs> right, Michelle? That's right. <laughs> we'll get across the finish Perhaps line together. Just the yeah, thank we'll you. get there. We'll get there. All right. So everybody have a good weekend. Nice to meet you. Reach out if you need anything. And um, we'll see you next week. Yes, Bye. Good night, nice yes. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Uh, good night. Good, good night. night. Good night. Bye.
Okay. Sorry. Uh, Regina. Oh, wait, let me get with, Char let me get with Charlotte real close. Charlotte. Okay. Actually, both of you, I need to talk to both of you and I'm just gonna, we can meet separately, but you're both re-entry students, correct? Yes. Yes. Char Char I know Regina is, cause Regina, I've had you before. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Yes. Your hair color is different. Yeah, um, I light my daughter lightened yeah, it up a little bit. It looks good. Good to see you again. All right. Yeah. So because you're re-entry students, I'm just going to talk to the two of you together because I'm going to be telling you the same thing. Let's see, Regina, you're Columbus. Charlotte, you are Norfolk. So have your dean campus deans talked to you about the your re-entry contract? So you guys are on some kind of a, and Dean Brown is on this. This is only the only reason why I know this. She's on the re-entry committee. Part of your re-entry contract says that we have to meet weekly. Do you guys know about that? I I mm -hmm. have to meet on campus also. Exactly. With, uh, uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, you have yeah. to meet with your campus and you have to meet with our instructors. So yep. here's what I propose. Okay, at least till we get to exam one in week four, I would like to set up a weekly meeting with you guys and it's just a check-in. It's, okay. hey, I'm doing fine. I'm doing good. You don't have to worry about me. Okay, or it's, hey, I'm not doing so well. I'm having a hard time understanding the content. Can we set up a, a, a tutoring session? Okay. But we have to have something on the books, okay? And I would appreciate if you would commit to at least getting checking in with me through week four. It's not that we can cancel the meetings, but you can shoot me an email and say, I I'm good, I'm good. You guys do well on exam one? I'm good, I'm good. Press Marvel, we don't need to meet this week. But okay. we need to, that's part of your contract. So- yeah. Charlotte, I know you said you work a lot and it would have to be different times every week. I'm fine with that. Okay. okay. I'm going to consider this our first check-in. Okay? okay. So Charlotte, I'm going to rely on you to give me a schedule. Okay. I don't care if it's week by week. I don't care. Okay. I don't care. I'll work. I'll work around your schedule. It sounds like you have a lot going on. So if you <laughs> just shoot me, but you can't forget. Because technically, we need to have something on the books. If you can give me, I don't know your work schedule, but if you can give me a couple of weeks out, I can meet Tuesday of next week, Wednesday of the following week, whatever. Okay. And we'll put it on the schedule. Because okay. when I start going to these at-risk meetings in a couple of weeks, they're going to be asking me, so when's your weekly meeting with Regina? Oh, do you have a meeting set up with Charlotte yet? So I'm going to get asked that. So I don't want to throw you guys under the bus. Let's just get something on the books. Okay. Also, okay, so hang on, Regina. So Charlotte, okay. is that it? So you're going to give me a couple of dates. To the, yeah. we'll, we'll use this tonight for our first meeting, our check-in meeting. Okay. But you got to follow up with me um, since we're not going to set up a regular weekly meeting. We're going to do it based on your work schedule. Yes. I mean, I have the, you know, my schedule scheduled out for a month. Oh, well, okay. It, that, like I said, but um, it would never be the same because my I work at patient first, so we don't yeah. close in. 10 at night that's fine so, so um then just give me four dates give me give me four days that work in the next four weeks and we'll put it on the calendar okay. and you got to check in with me um because i need to make sure you're on you're re-entering successfully that's the whole point of re-entry okay right we want to make sure you're on target because it's taken a lot to re-enter yeah and you got you got to do well I mean, re-entry students have to do well, otherwise they're out, right? right. Yes. So you got to use me as a resource this term if you need anything. And that helps with setting up the weekly check-ins. Okay. All right. So Charlotte, is that, uh, are we on the same page? Yes. Okay. All right. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Do you have any I will other send you an email with those dates. Yes, please. That would be Can fantastic. Can I get it to you tomorrow? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Over the weekend. I'm too okay. tired to do anything tonight. Okay. <laughs> oh, gosh, we're still recording. Hang on. I can... 
We're still recording. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs>